put your hands together for our next comic, Sterling Scott. I know y'all happy to be outside, but a lot of you are nasty as fuck. With COVID, close talkers were illegal. You didn't think about that, did you? Close talkers were illegal. Anytime someone get close, you'd be like, hey, partner, six feet. <laughs> Never in our history do we have the ability to tell these people to fuck off. <laughs> you ever try? You would take one step back, they'd take two steps forward. <laughs> you would offer them gum, they'd decline. <laughs> and the worst drunk, the worst, the worst close talkers were drunk people. Because drunk people always want to tell you a secret. <laughs> and that secret, they never, they never whisper. It's not in your whisper. It's not in your ear. No, it's always in your face. <laughs> and there's always a lot of S's and P's in the conversation. I finished a comedy show and I knew this motherfucker was drunk because he looked like a Mortal Kombat character waiting for a finishing move. He was outside like, <laughs> get over here. I was like, no. But he was aggressive. And he grabbed me by the back of my neck and he goes, son, your comedy is very special. <laughs> Because when he said special, I could see the spit bubbles arc. I could see the spit leave his mouth. And it landed on my lips. And I'm so Canadian, I don't want to make him feel bad for the situation. So while he was talking, I just licked my lips. At night, I can still taste him. <laughs> I know some of you are happy to be outside. You're like, we can go to bars. I don't want to go to bars. I'm Canadian. I don't know if you know this, but I stand out in Canada. <laughs> and sometimes when I go to bars, a lot of guys think I'm there to steal their imaginary girlfriends. <laughs> I had one guy do that douchebag thing that all guys have gone through. It's that thing where some guy is gonna shoulder check you and then try to make it look like it was your fault. I was sitting in the bar having a drink as I do and this guy's gonna shoulder check me and try to make it look like I'm the one starting to fight. He literally bumps into me and goes, Poof, oh, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> By the way, this is authentic Albertan white Canadian accent. Contrary to what you guys believe, this is what a Canadian white person sounds like. What the fuck, bro? I'm fucking chapped right now. Chapped is white Canadian for angry. If you want to understand it, it's cold, they're white skin, it chaps, it bleeds, they're hurt. He's hurt right now. I'm fucking chapped, bro. I'm fucking chapped. You want to go? You want to fucking go? Ladies and gentlemen, look at me. I'm too pretty to be fighting. But my mother never raised no bitch. <laughs> I looked this fool dead in the face and I was like, listen to me. I'm sick of this. This is what's gonna happen next. See, I'm gonna go to my car. And all I'm saying is you better not be here when I get back. And then I went to my car and I drove home. <laughs> I ain't trying to get in no fight. I got extensions in my hair. I can't be getting no fucking. I try to have one of these shits fall out. Someone be like, is that yours, Afro Kinky 1B? Is that, is that yours? Give me my sh We are living through a time that will be talked about in the history books forever. Did you ever think you would live through a time so detrimental that you would see the institution of religion shut down? Did you ever think you would see that? The institution of all religions shut down. Religion shut down. Liquor store still open. <laughs> Religion is closed. Weed store got a line around the block. <laughs> and at first,
first it didn't make sense, but then it clicked to me. Because unlike religion, weed is essential. <laughs> yeah, half the crowd laughed at that. The other crowd is like, he going to hell. Not with COVID, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going with a fifth of Jack and a big ass blunt, motherfucker. <laughs> I smoke weed and I do mushrooms. Black people, we need to do mushrooms more. I know we're afraid of them. I know. White people, you do everything. You weird. Well, I don't care what it is. You drink from each other's glasses, you dirty fucks. You... The reason why I want everybody to do mushrooms is because mushrooms do something. It's a tool. It removes ego, installs empathy, and allows people to communicate on a level that we've never seen before. It opens your third eye. I started taking mushrooms and it started to unlock memories in my life. And I remember as a child, I had a babysitter. And the babysitter used to take the He-Man toys and put it down her panties. Yeah. And then she'd tell me to come get it. Yeah. And then she'd hold me down and molest me. I was molested. And as I was recalling it, I felt the pain, not the emotional trauma. It was the 80s and she had a big 80s bush. <laughs> it was like rubbing steel wool on nonstick pan. It was just every stroke, she was just <laughs> exfoliating my youth. <laughs> Don't be sad for me. The scars on my face were deeper than the ones in my heart. <laughs> And now some people right now are like, why the fuck are you making a joke about molestation? Because I healed from my trauma. I realized that I decide who fucking hurts me. And if I can heal from this, so can anybody else in this motherfucker. Do not let your abuser have the power over you anymore. My mother taught me to be strong. Strongest woman I ever met. My mother lived on one side of Canada. My father lived on the other. I went out to see my father because he was sick. He had cancer. And I went to go see him. And when I got there to the hospital, he had a whole new wife. He had a daughter I had never met. He had a 16-year-old daughter, a wife. He had a whole family. And then he died. When he died, I didn't cry. My mother told me, we don't do that shit. So I picked up the phone and I called my mother and I was like, mommy, daddy's gone. And when the words left my mouth, the realization that my father was gone hit me and I started to cry. And my mother heard her cry me, she got mad. This is how tough she is. She said, what the fuck are you crying for? I didn't cry the day he left me. I didn't cry the day I found out he was with that bitch that's in the room right now. Yeah, I know she's there. I sure as hell didn't cry when I found out he made a child with that ugly motherfucker too. So now that he is dead, why are you still crying? And I was like, cause mommy, you're on speakerphone. <laughs> Can they hear me? Yes, mommy. Well, tell that bitch I'll meet her in the streets. And then she hung up the phone. <laughs> crazy up in Canada. We should be ashamed of ourselves. We now found out that we as Canadians have destroyed the Aboriginal people. They found thousands of children buried in their schools. We should be ashamed of ourselves. And every time I talk to my white comics, they're always like, what? There's racism in Canada? We don't see it. I go, yes, yeah, because your white's not directed at you, right? Like, you're not going to experience racism as a white person. <laughs> Unless you're a redhead for some reason. Yeah, white people, this is for you. Black people, pay attention. Why are you so mean to redheads? Oh, I'm making this up. Okay, fine. Uh, let's take a, play, a line out your playbook. Um, I'm gonna beat you like a redheaded stepchild. What the fuck is that about? <laughs> but gingers have no souls? That's the meanest shit I ever heard. Let me tell you something. If you're a redhead and you're in the building tonight, understand something. I love you. I love you. You know why? Because I know that no redheads had anything to do with slavery. Because you can't be a redhead and be under the sun that long looking at the slaves. You can't do it. You don't see no redheads in Vegas. That's like an African in fucking the North Pole. It don't happen. 
So if you are a redhead and you're in the building tonight, I will stand with you in the fight to have them call you Ginger no more. Because if you take that word Ginger and you rearrange the letters, you'll find out how closely me and you are related. Some of y'all got that joke way too fast. That's what happened right there. You know the fun part, look at all the dumb people not laughing. Look at them, they're like, what the fuck just happened? I came in for a comedy show, now what's a dooku, motherfucker? And if you are a redhead in the building tonight, from now on, let them call you orange. Because if you take the word orange and you rearrange the letters, it'll spell a Negro, and that's why orange is the new black. <laughs>